of Fox Sports. We are Blackboard. We are Great to be back home in the fabulous state of Arizona, Painted Rock, as we welcome you back home. The Diamondbacks welcoming themselves back home. They've got a challenge on their hands on this homestand. It's a three-teamer. First up, the best team in the National League, the Philadelphia Phillies, anchored by, many say, one of the best starting rotations over the last three or four decades. Now, for the Diamondbacks, offensively, at home, they are far superior. It's not even close. They really have struggled offensively on the road. Two things you think of. Number one, it's good to be home. Number two, they've got to figure things out. They have nine games to get it straight before they go back out on the road. Hi there, folks. This is Mark Grace. My name is Darren Sutton. Glad to have you back at the ballpark. We are all glad to be back home. One guy that did not struggle on this road trip. One guy that is proving worthy to bat in the cleanup spot. His shortstop, Stephen Drew. He really, you think about what could be for Drew missing those first five games of the season. No, oh, he's been fabulous, and he's not the stereotypical number four hitter. First of all, he's a shortstop. Second of all, he's a guy that's got one home run, but you know what? He's driving and runs at a huge clip right now, and he's getting big hits. Anytime they need a big hit, it has been Stephen Drew so far to get the big hit. Don't say that this team is struggling on the road because Stephen Drew certainly is not. Yeah, the New York Mets did not do what they wanted to with Drew. They did so with everybody else. Names like Palfrey and Nice and G. Those are the guys. G, they pitched huh? very, very well. Well, if you want to continue the theme of G, take a look at the Philadelphia Phillies in that starting rotation. They have not hit at all of late, and they still keep winning and winning. How good are these guys? These, simply put, Gracie, are resumes. Biggest win seasons. They're all aces on many other staffs, but you take it a step further, they're doing it again this year. Well, you can certainly say that these four guys have come as advertised. They were brought in. They're making a lot of money, and you know what? They're earning it because they're keeping the Phillies in every single game because the offense has struggled. There is no Utley. There is no worth this year so far, but you know what? They haven't needed them because anytime they score three, maybe four runs, that's more than enough to win. We have a lot of amazing numbers to pass along about these Philadelphia Phillies, including a lot about this man, Cliff Lee. He is on the mound tonight against brand new dad, Ian Kennedy. This ought to be fun. A, a big game with a team that's been in first place all season long. Tom Baylor breaks down Lee when we come back.
casinos. Play slots with your Players Club card. You can win up to $20,000. Jack in the Box. The new Bourbon Barbecue Steak Grilled Sandwich at participating restaurants. Southwest Airlines' new Rapid Rewards. Unlimited reward seats. No blockout days. And welcome back to the ballpark. Just about set to go in downtown Phoenix. Game one of the series between the Diamondbacks and the Philadelphia Phillies. Welcome to the field. Mark McClum with you. Before the season started, many already tabbed the Phillies as having the best rotation of all time. And tonight, the D-backs drawing Cliff Lee. We had a chance to catch up with Diamondbacks hitting coach Don Baylor to get a scouting report on a man who walked just 18 all of last year. It's our Geico quarter of the game. Number one thing, you have to get the bat bad head out front uh, lefties he throws a lot of cutters inside high fastball uh, right handers he'll throw a back door curveball but you know he's a competitive guy um, reminds me a lot of uh, Vita Blue you know the exceptional fastball that Vita threw up in the zone uh, didn't have his curveball but you know he kept coming at you with a fastball Lee tonight faces off with Ian Kennedy, who just became a father for the first time over the weekend. Can the Big Daddy provide a big performance on a big-time stage on Fox Sports Arizona? Stay tuned. Backs ready to go to work. Ian Kennedy, brand new father as of Sunday morning, very early. No leave of absence for him. That man certainly is already talking before the game, the Virginia native, about guys asking for days off early in the season. Are you using your pitchers too much? You'll love what Charlie Manuel had to say. Let's take a look at Charlie's starting lineup for the team that hasn't hit like they should. But they're winning just about every night. Victorino, Placido Polanco, he's been fabulous. Rollins, last couple of years, has taken a step backwards. Ryan Howard needs protection. That's up to Francisco, that's up to Ibanez. Ibanez has not been up to the task. Ruiz, Valdez, and Cliff Lee, one through nine for the Philadelphia Phillies. Kennedy is ready to go. The right hander, 26 years old. Two and one this year as he rocks and fires. And right down Broadway, that's strike one. Victorino's homer three times, including an inside the park home run in the recent series in San Diego. Shane with an on base of 352 this year. Fun to have a team like this come into town. Over the outside corner, no balls and two strikes to count. Kennedy really one big bump in the road. It was against St. Louis. He gave up nine. He lost 15 to five numbers presented by the Arizona Ford dealers. Otherwise, his ERA would be in the low twos on the year. As that one sails up and away, one and two, the count. 
Otherwise, Gracie, you take that one out, he's been fine. Yeah, but unfortunately, that's just all part of this game as a starting pitcher and as a reliever. If you have one big inning and one bad outing, it can put a dent in your ERA for a, at least a couple of months. What did you think about Ian last time? Five and a third, one run allowed in Cincinnati. He was a 3-1 winner. What would you think? He was a 3-1 winner. I thought he threw the ball well. I thought he threw far too many pitches, way more than he needed to. Slapped the other way, pretty well struck. Para, shy of the track, is there to put that one away. Eduardo Para is in left field tonight. You will not see Willie Bloomquist in left field, at least for the next 11 or so days. Willie on the disabled list. David Robleski and Associates presenting the defense. You won't see Willie at third either. Roberts is over there. Nady is at first. We'll discuss first base tonight. Miguel Montero is behind the plate. I'm a playing time now for Ryan Roberts. Melvin Mora is getting healthier, but Mora has lost a lot of that playing time with his foot injury when Roberts got hot. And when I said that Ian Kennedy threw a lot more pitches than he needed to, I thought he was 0 and 2, 1 and 2 a lot in his last start in Cincinnati, and then ended up wasting a pitch, wasting a pitch, and just threw far too many pitches instead of. Just doing something like this, and that is throw some strikes, and Justin Upton can't run it down. Blanco drives it to right field over the head of Upton. Placido Polanco with an incredible start to the year, hitting 366, slugging nearly 500. For Polanco, that is double number five on the year. I don't think the expectation was that he'd hit it that far the other way. Well, he hit it good, but boy, it had a lot of hang time. And two guys with the speed. Of Upton and Young, you just figure that's going to be an out. Justin reaches up, and he just flat out whiffs it. Nine out of ten times, that, that's an out at the major league level. So a double for Polanco. That pulls Roberts in onto the grass at third. And here is Jimmy Rollins. Rollins at 256. Switch hitter batting left-handed. And he takes right down the middle. He has seen injuries combined with a decline in the numbers over the last couple of years. Rollins, since 2009, is a 248 hitter since the beginning of the 2009 season. Change up misses outside. But bigger picture in his career, he's right there with regard to reaching and with doubles and triples and stolen bases in his career. Two and one to count. Jimmy Rollins as a left-handed hitter loves the ball down and in a very stereotypical left-handed hitter. Still got a little pop in his bat but he loves the ball down. He loves the ball in the inner half. There's that resume. He'll knock it out down and in there won't he? Mm -hmm. Right down Broadway with the fastball, two and two. Rollins, a career 300 hitter, actually just a tick better in his career against Arizona. 52 games against the Diamondbacks. He's got 72 hits against Diamondbacks pitcher. Phillies are fun to study this year. Why is that? They really are. They have not scored. More than four runs in their last 13 games. So a lot of teams would be panicked if thing that happened. They, in that time, they've hit 207. Yeah, gosh, we need to score some runs. We need to win some games, right? They're nine and four in that time. <laughs> it's nice to have that good starting staff, isn't it? 207 batting average, 245 ERA. Curveball and a dandy. The best part about that pitch, Ian Kennedy will tell you, is it plays to righties and to left. That's exactly right. That was a fabulous curveball after a few fastballs to get to two and two. Just a gorgeous curveball. It was down and in, but it was so much off speed. Rollins saw it in the spot. He likes it, but he was way out in front. Great pitch there. So Rollins is done. Jimmy goes down via the strikeout. Just 10 strikeouts this year with 11 walks. So. To get the swing and the miss, you just did something, Ian Kennedy. All right. Play pitcher now, Darren Sutton. You going after this guy, or are you going after Ben Francisco, a right-handed hitter on deck? I'm making Ben. Well, he answered your question. 
I'm making Ben beat me. You and I are on the same boat in that respect. This guy's won too many MVPs. This guy can hurt you way too often. But what do we know? Let's just go right down Broadway and see what happens. Well, they jump ahead 0 and 1. He has homered three times this year. The UCLA alum on deck in Francisco. Howard with three homers with 19 RBIs. Yes. That time he went upstairs above the belt. Ryan Howard is another guy that's a low ball hitter, folks. He likes the ball down. He likes the ball out over where he can get those big giant arms extended. That time he climbed the ladder, got him to chase. Belly button high for Ryan Howard is too high for him to hit. Remember Mark Reynolds? You he, bet. He was a lot like that. Above the belly button, he couldn't get to it. Fast ball. Thought he had the inside oh, corner. Oh. Bob Davidson not in the giving mood there. That was an awfully good pitch. We remember Bob Davidson, don't we, folks? That was that brouhaha with Gibby here the last home stand. Yeah, same guy. You don't suppose. I wouldn't put it past him. Curveball, Davidson. We know he loves to call that himself. That was what started the last brouhaha. Ian Kennedy. A sleepless night, then another one. He looks just fine. Cliff Lee to the bump. and Chris Young. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Justin Upton is behind. Steven Drew, a great start to this season. ex Nady is at first. We're trying to figure out who is on first on a night-to-night -night basis. It's Miguel Montero, Ryan Roberts, Gerardo Parra, and Ian Kennedy. 32-year-old left-hander. He is 2-1 this year, a 3-9-1 ERA. Lee last year split time between Seattle and helped pitch Texas to the World Series. And he goes to work and I think he surprised everyone this winter when they were guessing where and who and how much when he chose Philadelphia. You no, know, he had a great run in Philadelphia. He loves Philadelphia. Oh and two the count. In the postseason in his career. Seven wins in 10 starts for Lee at two ERAs. That one just missed the inside corner. He's a big time strike throw. Well, you saw three walks on 27 strikeouts this year. He thought he had number 28 there. He was disappointed in the call from Bob Davidson. That pitch is low. Lee last year. 212 and a third innings pitched. He walked 18. Isn't that amazing? That means he doesn't have to intentionally walk people either. He knows how to pitch around batters and still get them to swing at his pitch. We talk about that at times in this mm -hmm. show. Popped up to the right side. CY is finding those infielders' gloves in the air quite a bit lately. It was a 
Really tough road trip for him. As a matter of fact, Chris Young in his last nine games has four hits, hitting just 108 well, defensively. Too, too many strikeouts, too many pop ups. You're right. Ibanez, Victorino, Francisco, Blanco, Rollins, Valdez, Howard, Carlos Ruiz behind the plate. Well, with, with Chris, that is something a couple of years back. That I know you took note of, kept an eye on Kelly Johnson in the center field. First pick swinging. And Kelly is erased on a fly ball out to the center fielder, Shane Victorino. But you noticed with CY bat in the zone for just a short amount of time a couple of years back. It's a short spurt. I know you were talking about before the game that you're not seeing anything that scares you dramatically. No, not really. And and it was even in the in the Arizona Republic today, he was talking about man. I'm hitting some balls good. I'm just hitting them to center field where it's where it's real big. Well, that reminded me of Joe Altabelli when my first hitting coach I ever had in the major leagues. When I read that this morning in the Arizona Republic, a fine article. Joe Altabelli always told me, son, stay out of the air to center field. And I said, well, why is that, Joe? He said, because it's the deepest part of the ballpark, and the other team always has their best outfielder in center field to run everything down. So stay out of the air to center field. Well, Joe Altabelli would have probably been in the dugout and say, My dad. son, stay out of the air to center field. Boy, it just reminded me of Joe Altabelli when I read that this morning. Well, I'm glad you shared that with us. Two and one, a change up on two and oh. Keep that one in your hip pocket. You might want to share that with us again. That's a great story. Well, thank you. I'll tell you what, it rings true a lot of times. Chris Young would know. He is a center fielder and takes away a lot of hits. Classic pitch there on 2 0, on 2 and 1, right there, a fastball. 2 and 2, the count to Justin Upton. 359 career hitter against Philadelphia is Upton. 14 of 39, a couple of home runs. These are his first at bats against Cliff Lee. Right back to the screen. Well, he got a pretty good one to hit there. Belt high out over, and he missed it. We've seen Justin do big damage with that pitch right there. And he comes up empty. Two home runs allowed this year by the left hander. Strike three. He got the inside corner. Lee hammering that strike zone. The 32 year old out of Benton, Arkansas. Forget if you'd like to call a game with us and you're between the ages of 10 and 14. Come out to Chase Field tomorrow for the Sanderson Ford Kid Casters audition at the Chase Field Plaza from 4.30 to 6.30 right before the game. Over the inside corner. 0 and 1 the count to Ben Francisco. The Phillies series wise have won five series including two sweeps. In on the hands good pitch. 
Biggest part of the ballpark and your best defender puts it away. Raul Ibanez gets ready to go to work and Ibanez scuffling. Hits well in this ballpark and last year he got Ian Kennedy. Yes. Raul started slowly last season as well and then heated up. It's not easy back east or in the Midwest. We've had miserably cold weather all April. When you're older, too. Absolutely. It's just tough to get those old bones going. One and one, the count to Raul Ibanez. Four of his last 37. Oh, for his last 18. Belted center field. Uh, Joe Altabelli right now in Rochester, New York, just loving life with all these fly balls that are outs to center field. Oh, that's great advice he gave me when I was a, a rookie ball player. Yeah, that was one of Don Baylor's first managers in the uh -huh. minor leagues as well. I'm sure he told him the same thing. Stay out of the air to center field, son. Carlos Ruiz, the fine catcher, hammered the Diamondbacks last year. I mean, he put his foot on their neck and didn't let up. He was 10 of 18 against Arizona last season. Goodness. He's suddenly a veteran by the way. He's no longer a young catcher. He's been at it and doing it well for a half decade. Bouncing ball. Kelly Johnson. One two three go the Philadelphia Phillies. Back home, taking on the Philadelphia Phillies. Cliff Lee is completing his warm up tosses. Our fan poll. Our fan poll. How many total runs will Lee, Oswalt, and Hamels allow in this series? Total runs for the three starters. Four or fewer. A. B. Five to seven. C. Eight or more. Now, the Philadelphia Phillies' entire staff has allowed 69 runs. I'm saying eight or more. Are you in three games? Yeah. Now does that count? That doesn't count the bullpen, right? No, no, it's no. Be the starters. No, no, no. And it's a strike to Stephen Drew over the outside. The Phillies have allowed 69 runs this year, lowest, lowest total in the National League. League average is 93. The Diamondbacks 115. Yikes! In comparison, say. And that's just the starters. No, that's their entire total. staff. Okay. They've got five team shutouts, most in the big leagues. There are 10 teams, including Arizona, that don't have any. Swing and a miss, one and two, the count. Now oh, you're making, making four or fewer sound awfully attractive, aren't you? I'm trying to swing your boat a little oh, bit. 
You're about as fun as warts. One and two the count. Right down the middle. Do wins and losses matter? It depends where you stand. I'll tell you this, these three guys have won a lot. They have won a lot throughout their careers. You wins have to pitch what a win. Yeah, wins and losses don't tell the entire story, but I think it's an important stat. That man, one of my favorites to watch pitch, Roy Oswald. Mississippi born and raised. He will come up and in whenever he feels comfortable. Has the command that he won't hurt you or hit you. Throws a slower than slow curve ball. One and one to count. Xavier Nady. He's got some fire in him, doesn't he, for oh, a diminutive yeah. guy? Love him. One and one the count. Back to the screen it goes. We were talking the pregame show with with Joe Borowski. And he was saying guys like this, and I was saying as well, when you get a good pitch to hit, you can't miss it. Right there, X-80 got a good pitch to hit. He did nothing with it. Jody and Joe were right on the button. Well, he attacks as if he counts on you missing oh, those absolutely. good pitches. He's not fearful of you hitting those good pitches. And that's what you have to be. You have to have no fear on the mound. You can't fear the lumber. And that, that's the cutter. And he threw it right by him. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that was a good cut fastball, and it, and it got past him. But it, what led to this pitch right here, the good cut fastball in, was X Nady missing his pitch, fouling back his pitch, which, what, which ended up leading to strike two. So now Miguel Montero has never faced Lee in a regular season game. Since the start of the 2008 season, not many better than Cliff Lee. As Miggy takes a strike right at the belt. He's won 50 games. Halliday, Sabathia, and Lester. They've won more. ERA at 301. That's in the top 10. Where he is number one, though, since 08 is, and I love this number, it's stunning. 1.2 walks per nine innings. That's awesome. You're going to have to beat him with the lumber. He's not going to help you out. Strike right down the middle, and he took it. Like I said, you're probably not going to get another one of those. You better take full advantage of those when you get them. Little topper out to third in between hop. That's a fine play by Polanco. On an in between hop, he goes to work. He's faced six. He has gotten six. We move on.
Four so far, a strong start for Ian Kennedy after the biggest weekend of his life. He left New York on Saturday night, got home about 10 o'clock at night, and his wife Allison gave birth to Nora Rose at a little after 2 a.m. 20 inches long, 7 pounds, 3 ounces, and after basking in fatherhood for a little over 24 hours, Ian Kennedy back to work and facing the best team in baseball. Guys? Thank you very much, Mark, for being on that. Congratulations to Ian and Allison and their growing family. That's wonderful news. What a blessing. I love to see him out here working right away. There was a moment where Kennedy was riding. He ended up in a cab or on a subway or in a town car all the time in New York, going from place to place. And he was riding with a couple of his teammates. And as the baby came a little bit early, everything is fine. But saying, well, I'm, I'm at the window where I'll be just fine. So I'll get back home and it'll all be fine. He was saying, ah, not coming early. Within hours, he got that phone call. <laughs> Never fails, does it? <laughs> out to third. Ryan Roberts in time for the out. The man above laughs while we make plans, huh? He had it all figured out. Well, I, was, I was fortunate I didn't have to go through that. I had two rascals that were born in as off-season babies. Okay. One in October, one in November, so I was fortunate. I never had to get that phone call when I was on the road. I just got the tap on the shoulder in the middle of the night. Oh, boy. Pitches high to Cliff Lee. That old wives still boil some water. Nah, it, it really doesn't work. No? No. All right. Doesn't help at all, as a matter of fact. 1-0 and oh, the count. 1-1 one and one to Lee. Now, Lee hitless in seven at bats this year with three strikeouts. A 120 career hitter. Strikes out less than half the time, though, in his career. Which means he's a threat. Because he's a good athlete. See, he looked hitterish right there. That was a good swing right there, a good pass. He's been in the American League most of his career. How about a guy that spurns the Yankee money, signs for less with Philadelphia? Don't see that much. No, you don't. They don't much like that with the evil empire. Oh, you don't like him either, huh? Oh, I don't mind him at all, actually. I like to call him Evil Empire. Because others do. Oh, okay. Inside corner, that's strike three. What, what's new over there with you, pal? Well, I'm glad you asked. Get a racing Gracie for your very own. The D-backs legend, Racing Gracie, will be the first bobblehead giveaway this season. Pick up me, courtesy of Hinkle, on Thursday before the D-backs Cubs game. For tickets, call 602-462-4790. Or visit dbacks.com slash giveaway. Oh, I know you're going to have a bunch of those. There, they, oh, yep, you too can own one of those. Yikes. Anyway, 0-2 the count to Shane Victorino as we move along. Racing Gracie. No balls and two strikes to count. Curveball got him. He's done with it. We got ourselves a nice good old-fashioned pitcher's duel right here, folks.
you have because it's Gila River Casinos. They bring you Kachinko. Find out and learn how you can play right here at Chase Field. Now you head on out to the interactive kiosk near Section 111 during regular season home games. It's a craze that it's just spreading like wildfire. Kachinko, it is so much fun. Great prizes. Steaks aren't the only thing cheesy about Philly. Well, well what else is? I like cheese steaks, though. Oh. Oh, they're so good. Val Buena. Donnie Peralta. Man, cheese steaks are awesome. Roberts takes the pitch away. You know, when you get yourself a, a cheese steak, get yourself a cool beverage, you're ready to go. 1 0 oh, the count. Roberts into left center field, dying out there, dumps it in. They spent the entire time in New York in City Field grabbing Texas leaguers. Couldn't really cash in. This is a leadoff Texas leaguer, and he'll take it. He just catches a change up off the end of the bat, but it's not a surprise. Ryan Roberts just tears up left handed pitching, and he continues to do the same here. And a leadoff base runner. Nobody knows hit, no hits the Diamondbacks. Gerardo Parra digs in. So, Honeyball Sanchez. I was going to say it's happened before, hasn't it? Twice? Three times. No, oh, three no, times. No, one time. Two times, I'm sorry. Here's Parra. I'll get it right. Swing and a miss. That's strike one. Parra, of late, starting to knock the baseball around. Saw regular playing time with Willie Bloomquist, a hamstring injury. We never knew how serious it was. They kept it under lock and key pretty good. Come to find out it was serious. It's a it's a minor tear. Huge jump for Roberts. Really rolling the dice and I guess why not against a guy like Lee. I mean he really like a thief just took off on that one. He just guessed when Lee was going to go to the plate. And there it is right there. Ruiz does all he can do but easily in there is Ryan Roberts. And I like that. I think you have to take some chances against Cy Young caliber pitchers. You can't just sit back and wait for three base hits in an inning or a couple of extra base hits. You have to roll the dice. Good for Kirk Gibson and good for Ryan Roberts. Had a great jump. First stolen base against Lee this year. First one. Got it easy. Could have had it standing up. Only the second attempt. There's what Parra has done of late, as you saw a moment ago. Now Parra needs to try to pull the ball on the ground somehow, some way. He's not happy with the call from Bob Davidson, but it was a perfect pitch. It was a good pitch for a strike. Look for something out over the plate, something usually a fastball. There it is. Oh, boy. Yeah, that one was way outside. I think the reaction from Para, the pitch before, earned himself that one from Bob Davidson. That cut fastball looked like it was, as you said, almost in the other batter's box. Let's see. Now this one clearly outside, no question about that. But it's the reaction from the pitch prior to that that earned him that call. Oh my goodness. I mean, not since the, the late 90s Braves have we seen pitches like that called strikes. Oh my goodness. That's way out there. That that nipped the other line of the other batter's box. No question. No question about it. Wow. Huh. You thought that pitch was bad. Wow. Wait do you see this next one. You got to know who your umpire is. Fair enough. You're right. That's a perfect pitch over the inside corner. Oh and one the count. I look like Tommy Glavin at Turner Field getting that I call. I say. Saw that a lot. Wow. With that trio of, of Braves. But no balls and two strikes to count. Kennedy hitless in six at bats. Has a walk, has a strikeout, one sacrifice punt. 11 of 60 in his career. Those are those numbers there. Strikes out less than half the time. Inside. One and two the count. So you're telling all of us, Gracie, that there are certain umpires that carry a short little grudge well, there. Well, if you've got a, a year in the big leagues, 
Yeah, now if you've got a few years in the big leagues, you might be able to have a conversation with Bob Davis, and you can even get upset with him. But a lot of times, especially when it was a strike, the pitch before. Yes. If you have a fainting spell on him like uh, like Gerardo Parr just did, a guy like a guy like Bob. Oh, really? You, you, you thought you thought that was bad, huh? You thought thought that was outside, did you? Now wait, you see this next one. Bang. One and two, the count. Don't think Ruiz and Lee don't know how to feed exactly. off of that as well. And he'll be the same way if something happens with the Philadelphia Phillies. Younger player like Francisco, you mean, showing him up? Yeah, just a, a, exactly, a young player. It's, it's not so much if you say something, it's if you have a fainting spell like that. Umpires don't really care for that. Veteran umpires like that. I learned about I've learned that valuable lesson from a now re retired umpire named Paul Rungi. I had a bit of a fainting spell one time at first base. And he let me know right then and there if I ever do that again, I will get buried for the rest of my career. I said, yes, sir. Never had another fainting spell. Strike three. Curveball back toward the curveball. Tom Baylor told us he will do that to right handed hitters. And he did. Kennedy did put a nice at bat on him in the end. It was Lee getting it done. And as I said, it doesn't mean you can't say something to an umpire. You just have to get a few years in. Chris Young. Popped up to the second baseman in the first inning. That one is crushed. In the left center field. Up on to the balcony and out of here. Bolton Holmes Homer. $150 to the Arizona Mountain Rescue Association. And that's a good thing. That's how you break out of a long dry spell. Get a fastball middle in. Chris Young, we have seen him deposit a lot of pitches right in that spot in left center field. A mistake and a, one of the very few from Cliff Lee. And CY did not miss it. He hammered it. He did what you're supposed to do with one of the very few mistakes you're going to see from Cliff Lee. Very nicely done. And good for him. He needed that. The Philadelphia Phillies this year have now allowed nine home runs as a staff all year long oh, as a staff that's nothing they were tied as a staff with Armando Galarraga coming into this game <laughs> in home runs allowed as oh. a staff oh you're evil <laughs> well he leads the National League is facts my point. are facts he leads the National League as a staff they had allowed the same eight they don't give up homers they don't walk people Kelly Johnson dumps that one and breaks his back. For the sake of discussion, the Diamondbacks have allowed 28 home runs this year. 12, 13, nine. That's very few. Nine. And that's counting that one. That is counting that one. Boy, did Chris Young need that. Last 10 games, hitting almost an even 100. Breaking ball, Johnson into right field. Diving play, hauled in by Francisco. Fabulous play by the right fielder. Chris Young was struggling and struggling mightily against one of the best pitchers in baseball. He took a walk on the balcony.
Diamondbacks leading the Phillies on a home run by Chris Young, sir. Your name as the ball came towards you. Tell, tell us your name. Paul Holler. And uh, where's the ball right now? It's right here. Right there. And who's this young man who's uh, going to have the ball in his room one day? Yeah, this is John Asaro. And uh, what did he do when the ball came came towards you? Oh, he just he just stood up and clapped. Did, did you reach over or did you let the ball come to you all the way? I started to reach over, but it kept coming back. So, uh, yeah, I caught it back over here. And the ball is headed down to the Diamondbacks clubhouse. It will be signed by Chris Young. So enjoy that one in your room, little fella. All right, thank you. Guys, back to you. Great job by Mike McClune, by the way. Letting a fan have his moment, but also doing a little bit of uh, investigative reporting. Yeah. I thought In other words, was that fan interference or not? I thought it was close. Oh, there's a head ball right there, just missing. Placido Polanco with an 0-1 pitch. Look out! Uh, Polanco, a, he's a pro. Just spit at him and get right back in the box. He doubled to right field in the first inning. That's a shot and a foul ball was out in front of a curve ball that time. Philadelphia Phillies are trying to find health. And in doing so they have Dominic Brown the outfielder who. Was the young man who was to take Michael Worth's spot. We like him. Jason Worth's spot. We like I him a, a lot. He is on the mend. That is a roller out to the right side. Kelly Johnson is there. They pitched him in. Well, I'm told this is a pretty good trivia question. Just pretty good. And I guess we always say we'll let you know, right? Here we go. The AT&T trivia question. Name the five pitchers to win a Cy Young in both the American League and the National League. Cy Young in both the American League and the National League. Like that man. Out front of a changeup, 0 and 1 the count to Jimmy Rollins. He is the man that sparks the question, certainly. Roy Halliday, of course. How about Randy Johnson? Very well done. How about Roger Clements? Well, again, Gracie. With Houston and many teams in the American League. 0 and 2 the count. Then I'm stuck, so we'll probably have to wait for Gonzo or somebody to chime in as that was tapped to the right side. Johnson leaves his feet. Thought the ball got by him. Turned around and looked the other way. The ball was not far away, so Jimmy Rollins reaches. That was one of those where I think Kelly Johnson got to it a little more than he thought he was going to. Probably didn't need to leave his feet. He probably could have just stayed on his feet, and, and he couldn't find it. And by the time he did find it, Rollins is there easily. That'll go as a base hit. And just like that, the tying run at the plate and the ever dangerous Ryan Howard. So, speaking with Mr. Howard before the game today, Gracie, he really likes the batter's eye in center field. He says, of all the places we travel to, I can see the ball very well you here. You see the ball great here. There's no question about that. I didn't take him down the road that no, you can't stand journeying down with me. I didn't take him down that road asking him, you know, do you think it's a hitter's park? No, because it's not. And even though it is, I didn't ask him that. Because I know you don't like when I ask guys well, that. I just talked to him about the batter's eye. Well, the pitchers the last three years especially that have pitched here for the Diamondbacks, well, they... Other than really Dan Heron and then Brandon Webb, it's been a it's been three years since then. There haven't been very very many quality pitchers. So the ballpark's only as good as the pitchers to pitch in. That's why I didn't take him down that road. That's why this was a very good park to pitch in for Brandon Webb, Dan Heron, Randy Johnson, Kurt Schilling. Lots of guys had very good years here. So that's why I didn't take him down that road. That's why it's. You, we just came from City Field. Those guys got high RAs. That's a huge ballpark. But if you got lousy pitchers, it's going to be a, a hitter's ballpark. So we didn't even have to get into the fact he was just 
saying he was very comfortable hitting here because of that batter side. What would you say Philadelphia's ballpark is? Would you say that's a, a, a small ballpark, a hitter's ballpark? Well, absolutely. Okay. Tell anybody in the National League that faces this Philly pitching staff if that's a hitter's ballpark. Point well made. Thank you. Gosh, I love it when I'm right. Two and one the count. So I didn't even go down the facts with him. We just talked about that batter's eye. Mm -hmm. The facts are, yeah. The facts say, the statistics say that this is a hitter's ballpark. And I say you get some big time arms in here, it won't be. Yeah, that's why I didn't want to cloud things up. And hopefully this Diamondback Ball Club will turn this into a pitcher's ballpark this year. High fly on a fastball in. He did not square it up. Up to him. He secured his route to say the least. Ends up with that baseball in his glove. And he hauls it in. That ball, he's it was his slicing buddy. on him. Yeah. It was slicing on him. He thought he had a beat on it, and it started slicing on him. All of a sudden, you, you see the ball gets in on Ryan Howard just a little bit, but then it starts slicing. Uh oh, Justin says. He ends up making a nice play. Good pitch, too. On the cavernous gaps of Chase Field, kept that ball in the ballpark. Two outs, Ben Francisco. Well, oh, be careful there. Nady with a nice job hauling that one in. Take a look at the Justin Upton route as this ball starts slicing. Okay, I got a beat on this. No problem. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ends up making a terrific play. Oh, and one the count. Francisco. Takes a pitch up and away. Ben fly to center field back in the second inning. He came with Lee in the trade that sent Lee to the Philadelphia Phillies the first time through. That trade was back in July of 09 from Cleveland. Pick off throw and back to the bag with a slide as Rollins. Raul Ibanez waits on deck. Infield playing the pole a step or two. Outfield is straight up. And that fastball in. A changeup, actually. My apologies. One and two, the count. Kennedy pitched against the Phillies last year in this ballpark. He went eight innings, gave up two runs, pitched very well. Worth and Abanez got him with homers. And it was a 3 2 team loss. Bouncing ball out to Stephen Drew. A little flip. That'll put an end to things. Kennedy solid so far tonight. He and the Diamondbacks lead Lee and the Phillies 2 to nothing.
folks are taking a look for that four dollar 14 ounce beer there one of the value stops the big one looks good too though as we welcome you back to the ballpark let's answer our trivia question anybody say Gaylord Perry along the way I think that's a pretty good one the five pitchers to win the Cy Young in both leagues oh, Pedro Oh, Pedro Martinez forgot about him. You didn't know Gaylord Perry. Absolutely. I knew it as soon as they emailed me the trivia question this morning. Went very well. Gaylord Perry. He could have pitched in this ballpark with all those spitballs he was throwing. That's enough out of you. Owen won the count. Upton spanks it to center field. A leaping attempt. Justin's on the move. A double for Justin Upton. A scalded line drive over the head of Victorina. Wow. Every now and then we'll see Justin hit one of those line drives that just take off on an opposing outfielder. And that time it was Shane Victorino's turn to fall victim as that ball is just scalded. Well, I got it, and then it just takes off on him. No chance for Victorino. Then a leadoff double there for Justin Upton. So the Diamondbacks making a little noise here at home, and that's been the tendency according to the statistics, huh, Darren? Well, they tell us that they don't hit well at all on the road this year. And visibly, you can see them. You can actually see them trying to do more on the road, trying to do right. too much, grinding the bat in their hands. Whether the numbers say it or not, they do. They do. But they're they're a club that approaches things differently on the road, and that I think has to change. Well, I think it really hurt them last year. They were dismal on the road last year. Oh, this guy two. was very good this year so far on the road. And he, Stephen Drew. He giggled at the uh, the premise that this team doesn't hit well away from home. Makes you wish you had him in Denver and in Chicago to yeah, start exactly. the year. Abdominal injury cost him the first five days. Pitch is high. Don't forget, anytime the Diamondbacks score six or more runs, Taco Bell gives away three free tacos by purchasing a large drink. Four to six the following day. I'm told some locations are offering up soft tacos as well. Oh, that's bad. The one two. All you have to do is ask at some participating stores. Kind of a an organic movement, if you will. They're not advertising it and they're sticking to the rules. It's a crunchy taco only, but if Young gets a couple of more homers or his mates and they get to six runs, doesn't hurt to ask. That's all I'm saying. CY looks on as Drew is beaten up and in with the fastball. He struck him out looking. He struck him out swinging. That is six strikeouts for the left-hander Cliff Lee. Well, this pitch just runs up and in, ties up Stephen Drew. No chance there. That's a heck of a pitch there from Cliff Lee. Executes so many pitches with such command that a lot of his strikeouts are actually of the looking variety. About two out of every ten strikeouts in the big leagues are strikeouts looking. He's nearly half. Now he got a swing and a miss there, but nearly half of his strikeouts are looking. Usually, I would imagine, usually the cut fastball in on the right handed hitters. Randy Johnson got a lot of those. Now, Cliff Lee's not the strikeout pitcher Randy Johnson was, but nobody was. But Randy got a lot of those freezes. He frees right handed hitters on the inside corner. Cliff, Cliff Lee gets a lot of those too. Like that right there. 0 oh and 2 the count. Hold the thought on that cut fastball because I think we'd like to tie it into something else here in a minute. And we'll see if it ties up Xavier Nady. He struck out back in the second. Spins him out of there. One and two the count. Oh, 
Well, somehow he was able to lay off that curveball. I think he was so fooled, he was just buckled by it. Well, there's your example. If this is any closer to a strike, there's a strikeout looking. Two and two. And there's the strikeout anyway on a change up away. Change up away. You were talking about the cut fastball. Let's look at this. Cliff Lee, 0 2 to 07. In other words, in early parts of his career. In Cleveland. And went down to the minor leagues during the tail end of this. See the ERA, see the walks per nine. See the difference from 08 now, the drop in ERA. Look at the command, and of course, in the postseason. We talked about it a bit. I think you might have just mentioned the pitch. What changed? I think he developed that cut fastball since his return from the minor leagues, his demotion. And he's got great command of, and that's the sexy pitch now is, is the cut fastball. Back when I was playing, the sexy pitch was the split finger. Everybody threw it. But the split finger can be hard on a lot of pitchers' arms and elbows. The cut fastball is not. And because of that, a lot of pitchers are throwing it, and a lot of pitchers having a bunch of success with it. Cliff Lee, I think certainly that pitch turned around his career. Basically, it's a fastball, folks, held off balance just a bit. Pressure on the middle finger when you throw it. You're not breaking your wrist. You're not splitting your fingers. You're not putting pressure on that elbow. You're throwing a fastball a bit off center with the middle finger on the ball. It naturally just will run in the direction you're throwing it. There's a looking right there to cut fastball away. He just struck out the side. Two to nothing. Ian Kennedy has been fabulous. Four innings, two hits, no runs, no earned, and no walks with four strikeouts. Two to nothing is the score on a home run off the bat of Chris Young. Curveball is a strike. Called high. Looked like he got the outside corner. One and oh the count. So then it's not a strike. Not if Bob Davidson says no. And I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing. Nor should you. 2 0 oh, the count to Raul Ibanez. Four for his last 38 now. And that one sails behind, up and out. out. You have a 2 to nothing lead, a hitter that's still trying to find his way. Ian knows that attacking is the only way to roll. Three and one the count. Just got a note from our good friend Boog. John Shambi? He checked in. Where, where, to say hello. where is John Shambi? Fine broadcast. Traveling the country, calling baseball. 
Good friend of the show. Hot shot. On a couple of hops. It's gobbled up there. Well, let's talk about John Shambi a little bit later because right now I'm going to tell you when you're at Chase Field, you can use your smartphone's Wi-Fi to connect to digital d a new free portal available only inside Chase Field. Get free access to video replays, a full menu of ballpark concessions, and purchase tickets directly from your phone. That's kind of big league. You like that, do I you? I do. No, no. I actually got the same. I got a, a text from John Shambi as well. Go, look what, at what, this, by the way. What did you say? Yeah, he just wanted to tell me that the next time he sees you, he cannot wait to buy you a steak dinner. He thinks the world of your work, well, and he's just him. lucky to have you as a friend. And he, he told me, he says, he says, Mark, I couldn't agree more. Chase Field is absolutely a pitcher's ballpark. No. Actually, and, that's actually not true. Well, well, well. Not I'll true. show it to you. That's not true, the statement. It's not true that he said that. So good to have you on board there, Boog. Wish you well wherever you are. One and two, the count. Well, Sorry what, about that, Boog. What a fabulous broadcaster he is. And very knowledgeable of the game. He certainly is. And he's never said that to you. High pop to the right side. Easing back and under is Kelly Johnson. Dare I say at some point hard hitting Kelly Johnson. And it's going to be got to get him going a short time before Kelly Johnson gets it going. Meanwhile, Ian Kennedy just twirling a gym through four and two thirds. He's got Nibanez on a hot shot on the ground. Ruiz in the air. Ruiz is over two. Now Wilson Valdez is grounded out to third. Here's the thing though again don't confuse this Phillies club for a club that is doing well offensively because they're not. They're winning they're winning because of pitching. This is a club that if this were teams that we've covered. We'd be talking coming on the air doing opens about it. What has gone wrong with the Arizona offense we'd be wondering. But when you have an ERA of two four five in 13 games when you hit 207 and go nine and four. That's truly amazing. And I'm not taking anything away from Ian. He's earned the solid out into this point. He's making his pitches. But right now, this is not the same Philadelphia Philly ball club that we've seen the last few years, the championship team a couple of years ago. The, the just about every year playoff team, Philadelphia Phillies. They did it with offense and pitching. This team is doing it with great starting pitching and a pretty doggone good bullpen as well. Gone is Chase Utley with an injury. Gone is Jason Worth down to Washington. That's a lot of sock in your lineup that's missing. Just got a piece of it. The starting pitching for Philadelphia in the five game winning streak has an ERA of 1.26. 1.26. This is outside. They go without Jose Contreras, who is on the disabled list now with an elbow injury. Ryan Madsen is the closer. Brad Lidge, curveball high and in. Brad Lidge told that his ailing rotator cuff is healed, saw to the team doctor. Lidge hopes to be back in early June. Bouncing ball ran that one in on his hands. It's a changeup. So far, very good for the right hander, Ian Kennedy. Brand new dad.
Very good fabulous. stuff. Love it. Tomorrow at 5.30 on the newest episode of the 10th inning, Barry Enright hits the links with Jody Jackson. Get to know a good man, umpire Teddy Barrett, and a special tribute to a very unique Diamondbacks fan. The 10th inning tomorrow at 5.30. Teddy Barrett. He's a big Diamondbacks fan, huh? No, no, he's a, he's an umpire. There's also a separate story oh. on a big Diamondbacks fan. Well, that looks like more like a Phillies fan. I love the Philly gnome. The Philly Garden gnome is my favorite character. And a, and a St. Louis Cardinal girlfriend. Well, the deal here was they had the kiss cam between innings. Right. And you see how he was cuddling up on her. Right. He was hoping to get up on the on the big board out there. Oh, okay. He I didn't got get you. up there. I got you. Well, they're not going to put a Philly fan up on the big board, looking like a gnome. I don't like his creativity. Well, it's very I don't know that I support his team. Yeah, but I'm just saying reward the effort. That's all I'm saying. True. I understand. Ryan Roberts curveball. That's a strike. What a beautiful pitch. That was a great pitch, wasn't it? Look, okay. Come on, can it can what? Hey, whoop. No, no, that. don't don't come out of character. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Dig in anywhere there, big boy. Roberts to right field. Scalton. Francisco going back. He's got it. What a play by Francisco. Now Roberts homered to right, deep to right on the road in Cincy. He gave that one a ride. Remember, he singled and stole the base against Lee in the third. Really a fantastic play there by Ben Francisco in right field. Doesn't even bother looking where the fence is. He knows he's going to bang it eventually, and sure enough, he does. Very nice play right there by the young right field. That always makes a pitcher happy. Yeah, well, well, shouldn't have hit that ball that hard. I think he missed his spot. His outfielder's there to back him up. Gerardo Parra goes to work in the left center field. On the move is Ibanez. Parra out of here! Association. Or how are the other way? Yeah, just kind of a smooth swing. He just catches it perfect to cut fastball away. I was kind of looking forward to bounce in front of the wall and be extra bases, but it went over the wall. Do you expect that to go out of the ballpark here? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Hara in his career against left handed pitching hits 247 and has never hit a home run until now. Until now. And that's the left handed pitcher he hit it off of. Well, I, I mean, you knew it was hit well. I was kind of watching the left fielder, Raul Ibanez, and he had kind of given up on it, uh, expecting to play it, you know, as, as a double, but into the seats it went. Kennedy on the ground. Rollins in time for the out. So kind of awestruck by that homer, folks. I have to be honest with you. Let's go to our Chaz Roberts air conditioning cool play. This one stunned us too. Anytime Lee gets touched like this, you're stunned. Well, it's not stunning when Chris Young hits a home run out there. That's 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 for sure. But you're right. You don't expect it from Cliff Lee very often. However, it is a bit stunning when Gerardo Parra goes the other way against a left-handed pitcher because he's never done it before. Hey, we saw history. Well, it's nice to see, isn't it? All gone right. Three to nothing, Arizona leads it. And let's not kid ourselves, Gerardo Parra. He's trying to earn more playing time. That's a good way to do it. Well, you knew something, first of all, was wrong with Willie Bloomquist in New York. Well, not a whole lot was said, but Parra was playing every day, including against left-handers. Mm -hmm. Turns out they were keeping it under refs. Bloomquist is on the DL. Now Parra gets a chance to stay in there and start against one of the best left handed pitchers Absolutely. in the game. He got a couple of base hits yef yesterday afternoon off of Jonathan Neese, a left hander. And then he 
That's a long ball against one of the better left-handers in the game. Good change up there. That is the first time in his last 10 starts that Lee has given up two or more homers in the game. It happened to him last, the 21st day of August at Baltimore last year. He had only given up two homers this year. That was that cut fastball. He tried to freeze Chris Young with it. Able to tip it foul and try it again. Boy, that looks good, doesn't it? Hot candy, snow cones. Good luck getting those rascals to bed tonight. Well, they'll fall asleep on the drive home. Just stay the full game. No, oh, that's true. Sugar crash. The 2 2. I'm guessing. I've never said that out loud before now, obviously. <laughs> two and two to count. Make that drive back from Disney. All of a sudden, you're done. They're having fun now, though. Some of our local schools, some of the local schools in the area don't have school this week, so we're excited to see some of you youngsters out at the ballpark. Change up out front. But Gerardo Parra, truth be told, young man, you stunned all of us. And more than anyone, I think you just stunned Cliff Lee. If that's possible, we do nothing. And for the Arizona Diamondbacks, the offense has awakened since they have returned home. They lead Cliff Lee three to nothing. Lee digs in. Ian Kennedy, though, is becoming your story because against the Philadelphia Phillies and Lee, he has not blinked. So far, so very good for Ian Kennedy. He's just standing right on the mound. He's working fast. He's throwing strikes. That was fouled back. Been ahead just about all night, Darren. By the way, Lee and his mates, the Philly starters, in their last four games, they had given up a total of three runs. Three runs. They've given up three tonight with no homers. Pretty amazing. Well, Kennedy's got to make it stand up. Big exhale as he rocks and fires, and that curveball, some kind of special tonight. I don't care if you throw it to a pitcher or not, that pitch is effective to anybody. Now, this is no time to make friends with the opposing pitcher. Just go ahead and dispose of him quickly, like he just did on three pitches. Because even though the Phillies have had trouble scoring, don't just sit on this, because there's still plenty of thunder in this lineup just waiting to escape. Victorino has to hop out of the way. Chris Young with a home run. His mate, Gerardo Parra, with a home run. 
That's why the score stands at three to nothing. Parra's first ever home run against a left-handed pitcher in the major leagues. And it came against Cliff Lee. And boy, for all you golf instructors out there that are trying to teach your pupils to swing easier, don't overswing, make a nice clean pass through that ball on the tee. Roto Parr just backed you up there because he did not overswing at all at that. Pitch. Very well said. Good no, analogy. it's baseball. Still a very good analogy, though, as that one skied down the left field line and just foul. I'll take that one, Darren. Thank you very much. I think it's well done. Did that fan just catch that ball on the fly, though, by the way? If he did, you and I are probably thinking the same thing. Gentleman in the Orange shirt, was it? Let's take a look. Did we get? Oh, my. Oh, come on. Nice grab. Nice pitch. Inside corner. That's strike three. Victorino is done. He has struck out twice. Right to the inside corner it goes. That is a good pitch and a good call from Bob Davidson. Much to the chagrin of Shane Victorino, but he'll look at the pitch and he'll say, man, nothing you can do with that one. Just a perfect pitch. He's made a lot of those tonight, Ian Kennedy. Lacido Polanco doubled to right field in the first inning. Off the outstretched glove of Justin Upton. He grounded out to second in the fourth inning. And along the way in that second at bat, Ian Kennedy came right up, right by that ear hole on with the pitch. Change up, one and one. Kennedy tonight twice has gone to two and one once to three and one six times to zero oh and two six times to one and two. Wow he just missed what looked like a slider there. That's exactly what it is. Just a small little slider only throws it about ten times out of every one hundred pitches. Used it early on in Denver. In on the hands, fights it off. Blanco, a couple years back, had a 200 hit season in 07. Quite a few of those were those right there, but again, he is an endorsement for not striking out a bunch. Absolutely. His bat stays in the zone for a long time, and he just puts the ball in play, takes a tough pitch, fights it off right off the label of the bat, and just drops it out there over Stephen Drew's head. That's just professional hitting right there. Not every pitch you get is a pitch to drive. Sometimes you got to. Get a couple base hits on some pitchers pitches. He's got the great ability to do that. Gas. 92. Ian Kennedy reaching back. That's like father strong right there. Mm -hmm. That's great you use that word. Garrett Anderson, the slugger, used to describe his strength as such. He had three children. Mm -hmm. I'm daddy strong, he'd say. And there's another one. Oh, and two, the count. By the way, talking about the runs that you think you will see, five to seven, half of you are saying eight or more. Wow. I'm going to go with at least three. Well, you are something special, aren't you? Oh, and two, the count. My partner always willing to go out on that limb. Well, I know it's going to be a, yeah, a higher total. He wasn't born in Switzerland for nothing. It was a gorgeous summer day, though. Wasn't too hot, wasn't too cold. <laughs> kind of medium. Just a little sunny, a little cloudy, partly cloudy. Oh, and two, the count. Phillies have stranded a pair. And a balk is have a balk. And, and right there, I just think that's kind of silly for me and Kennedy and the Diamondbacks. Polanco's not going anywhere. He's not a base dealer. There's no reason to even bother picking off right there when you're 0 2. 0 oh 2. Did he not clear the rubber there? I'm not quite sure. You don't have to come set yeah, to throw over to I, first. No, you don't. I, I don't know what the call was, but. Once again, I just think it's there's no need for it. One thing you can't do is like 
a jump spin move that you get away with in college. I agree with you, though, Gracie. I believe second base umpire Vic Carapasa called it. I think. I'm not sure who called it, but nevertheless, I would just focus all my attention with a three-run lead and an 0-2 count with two outs on Jimmy Rollins. Curveball, ground ball. Nady left the bag. We'll go away. back to it because Kelly Johnson is there to clean things up. The ball doesn't haunt him. He's pitching a fabulous ball game. No from Bob Davidson. Okay, what did I do? And it was very cordial. Okay, this is what you did wrong. Now, Kurt Gibson comes out to talk to Bob. Remember last time this happened, Darren? <laughs> it was nose to nose, spit to spit, sparks flying. It was just a good brew, haha. This time, they're just having a nice cordial conversation about what's going on, and that's the professionalism in both these guys. This is the last time these guys two met here in Chase Field. It was Donnie Brook City, and it was big league. But today, it was cordial, and kudos to both of them for being professionals and letting bygones be bygones. Well, you predicted that would happen. Actually, when that happened, you loved it, but you predicted that the next time they got together, they actually better said, you said, when the game's over, they'll both be done with it. Oh, it, it, was, predicted yeah, that. it was over once the game was over, exactly. That's just part of being professional. And those are two old pros, Gibson and Davidson. Kelly Johnson. Takes that one out of the catcher's mitt, fights it off. Kelly. Fly to center and fly to right field. Trying to find a way to get him going. 143 this year against left-handed pitching. 297 in his career against Southpaw, so much better. Oh, dear. Yikes. That one would have hit him right in the middle of his sternum. Had he not made contact with that one. Fortunately, he did. That would have been hard on the sternum. One and two, the count. So right back in there you go, like the big bully you are, Cliff Lee. And for that, he collected some firewood from a broken bat from Kelly Johnson. West high speed internet, high speed pitch, 94 miles an hour, and Kennedy 93. This guy can pitch, can't he? Cliff Lee, yeah, he's down three zip to Ian Kenny, but he is a lot of fun to watch pitch. Struck out Upton looking. Upton doubled to center field on a line drive after that in the fourth inning. And he proceeded to strike out the side with Upton in scoring position as that one is low. Cliff Lee won his Cy Young Award in the 2008 season. He won 22 games as an Indian that year, 2.54 ERA.
and he's a winner. He has pitched well enough to win. Wins do measure his success. They don't always measure success. They do for Lee. Since 2004, and that includes going to heck and back, if you will. Really struggling. There you see it. You have Halliday and Oswalt and Lee on that list. You know, it's funny. Derek Lowe makes a handsome sum of money. Uh -huh. Fair enough. But he has forgotten sometimes that he is on lists like this, winning his pitchers the last eight seasons. Wouldn't you say? He gets forgotten sometimes along the way. Unless you faced him, and then you realize just how great he is. Former closer as well. He's got a lot of saves as well. He's had a terrific career, has Derek Lowe. Pitch is high. That's ball four. Don't see that very often either. A walk. That's almost about as often as Dan Heron walks a batter. As we told you, since the start of the 2008 season, 1.3 walks per nine innings. That's his fourth walk this season. Unbelievable. You and I have witnessed relievers over the last couple of years that have unfortunately walked that many in, a, in an outing. In the first couple of innings. One and oh, the count. Billy's starting pitchers go six innings or more, give up three runs or less. We don't call that a quality start in this booth, but. They put together those numbers three quarters of every time they take the mound. Three quarters of the time. League average is half the time, and unfortunately, Arizona has only done it a third of the time this year. Swing and a miss, one and two. And in those times, the 16 times the Phillies pitchers have done it, they're 16 and up. Amazing. Right now, Cliff Lee has found a bit of a hole in the swing of Stephen Drew. Just off the inside corner and about chest high, and Stephen's having trouble laying off that pitch up and in. Huge jump up to throw down, slapped it. Again, a massive jump. Eric Young's got something. First base coach Eric Young has something. On Cliff Lee. No doubt in my mind. That's two fabulous jumps. Now two stolen bases against Cliff Lee. Eric Young is a great first base coach. He was a great base stealer. So he's obviously found something. Two and two the count. Or maybe they've just took a couple of chances and gotten fortunate. And of course, he'll never tell you he's got anything on him. Never. The 2-2. Two -two. Over the outside, that strike three. And Steven Drew doesn't like the call, but I think he'll, he'll realize that's a strike. Stephen Drew. Showing a little you, fire there. You rarely see him get upset, but this looks like a pretty good pitch, folks. It's about as perfect as you can do it. No, not comparable to the pitch that they rung up Gerardo Parra on earlier no. in the game. Steven. I don't mind that though. Steven was Atta boy, Steven. Been a little upset. Yeah. I want to see him drink it and then like slam his cup. That's what I want to see. Come on, drink it and slam your cup, Steven. I mean slam it. Yeah. Atta boy. Slam it. Not fun enough, but I like it. I like a little edge to Steven. Pitch is high, one and one the count. By the way, it's worth rewinding because the homer, I think, stunned us so much. Don't forget, Gerardo Parra is the hitter that had a pitch that was way, way, way outside called strike three because he had showed up the home plate umpire, Bob Davidson. As that one misses. And boy, did he flush it. He forgot about it, both Davidson and Parra, by homering the next time up. Well, to his credit, he didn't wait around. The very first pitch he saw of the next at bat, he hit in the seats. Yeah. Be your own umpire. Just go ahead and whack that first good one. 
He went around for the curveball or the cut fastball. Whack that first good fastball you see. Bouncing ball toward the hole. Here comes Upton. Ibanez up with it. Go way off the mark. How big is that stolen base? And it's got to feel good for X Navy. RBI number four on the season. Arizona leads it four to nothing. You have to take chances against the great ones, and Cliff Lee is certainly in the category of the great ones. Justin Upton takes the chance with the stolen base, and he gets plated easily as X Nady rips it into left field, scoring easily with the great speed as Justin Upton. No chance. Diamondbacks doing a great job of adding on here in the middle innings. Right back to the box. Lee fields his position and throws in time for the out. Montero is done. He is 0 for 3. But a huge stolen base and a timely hit. Make it 4 to nothing. like us on Facebook during tonight's game receive a coupon for huge savings fries fresh food famous low prices Porsche visit Porsche of North Scottsdale at scottsdale.porschedealer.com all righty then we welcome you back to the ballpark downtown Phoenix Arizona a gorgeous night to play outdoor baseball with that roof open Gerardo Para with a home run the other way against Cliff Lee lefty on lefty Justin Upton pitched in a hit a stolen base. Justin's got a couple of hits. Or a hit and a walk I should say. And Chris Young with a two run homer. Here is Ryan Howard the slugger. Looks at a huge defensive shift and he takes a pitch that is low. One and oh the count there you have it. Roberts essentially playing shortstop. Oh, beautiful curveball. One and one the count. The last time a Philly starting pitcher gave up four runs or more in an outing, Roy Halladay did it on the 19th day of April. That was one time through the rotation, and Halladay pitched a gem last night, striking out 14. But Halladay went six and two thirds against Milwaukee and gave up six runs in that outing, eventually losing it nine to nothing. The other way. Home run distance, but a foul ball. Two and two the count. Really nice pitch. Just shows you how doggone strong Ryan Howard is. Just a little flip swing and it had home run distance the other way. Curveball over through it. Three and two the count. So Ryan. Four times has finished in the top five in the MVP voting and has won the award. Four times in the top five. 
Yeah. Got it. Fastball up and in. Threw him a curveball the pitch before, even though it was an ugly one, he still showed it to him. And this went right up the ladder again. That's higher than high for Ryan Howard. He loves the ball down. He loves the ball out over. And he just got ruined right there by an inside fastball from Ian Kennedy. He's really done a great job on the slugger tonight. There's that little cut fastball slider away. Ben Francisco, you love a first pitch swing, and especially when he doesn't square it up like a roto par did. Exactly, and especially late in the ball game. Pitch count starting to climb. You're in the 90s now at 91. You're just loving that. Raul Ibanez. I mean, Ian Kennedy has been dominant tonight. Fastball is away. 1 and 0 the count. There's that terrible runner. Gonzo I mean. and Randy. The 1 0. Ibanez takes that slider down and in. Just another loss for your caricature tonight. You're about 0 and 70 now to start your career. He is just awful. How should get a bobblehead of him? Two and one the count. Well, if it's never going to win a, a title, why isn't it a Cub bobblehead? The Gracie <laughs> Cub. Oh, you have just been medieval tonight on people. Two and, and two the count. And, and me. Well, you're, you know, that's normal for me. I like it. You've been honry all night ever since I came here. You've had an edge to you. Jet lag. I mean... My goodness. Grumpy. The two, two is a curveball that is high. Three and two, the count. Now, he flipped that curveball up there to Howard. Didn't get it where he wanted to and buzzed his tower in and struck him out. He's going to double up on the curve. That's the breaking ball again. That was a good one. Follow the Diamondbacks with MLB.com at Bat 11 for your iPhone, iPad, Android, or BlackBerry. Get live audio, pitch by pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text at Bat to 31826 or visit DBacks.com for details. Speaking of details, give us some details about Ian Kennedy, Darren Sutton. He went back in with the fastball inside. He struck out Howard with a fastball, Ibanez with a fastball, eight on the night. For the brand new daddy, Nora, you should be proud of Pops. Over the Phillies, Jody Jackson alongside Joe Borowski as we get set for Quest Diamondbacks Live, our post-game show. And Joe, Ian Kennedy has been incredible. Seven innings, eight strikeouts, just three hits. How has he been so incredibly efficient tonight? Ian Kennedy's done a great job of being aggressive 
and working very fast. I'll show you what he's done in order to keep these Phillies batters in check. Well, and he's been a busy man. He and his wife, Allison, welcoming a baby girl. So we're sure he'll be getting out of here pretty quick, but we will hear from him tonight in the postgame, guys. Now looking forward to that. Let us hope that the offense can add on and depending on Ian's strength and his ability to go further in this game, go the distance, no one in the pen and the bullpen when needed. All that comes together. Look forward to hearing from him as well. Ryan Roberts singled stole a base in the fourth inning flew out to the wall in right field and did so in the fifth inning. Lee misses up and in one and one the count. Well he had a big hack it would look like a cutter staying right down the middle one ball and two strikes. Lee worked in his last outing against Milwaukee went six innings gave up two earned runs. No decision. It was a Phillies four to three win. Shut out Washington on the road. Struck out 12 Nationals in his previous start. Curveball, foul ball. In that game, by the way, against Washington, Lee became the first pitcher in the last. 47 years to strike out at least 12 in a complete game while throwing fewer than 100 pitches. Curve ball. Did he tip Foul it? ball, yes. Just got a piece of it. You think about that, Gracie. 12 strikeouts, nine innings, the distance, 99 pitches. It's unheard of. That's not Greg Maddox ground ball outs all the time. No, that's that's a lot of strikeouts. Strike him out. Striking him out in three and four pitches. Inside. Tried to get that freeze fastball with the cut. Just missed. He's only pitched twice prior to tonight against the Diamondbacks. On the 19th day of August at home in 2009, he went the distance in beating Arizona. Swing oh, and a miss. Cut fastball. cut fastball. Goodness gracious. He's piling them up tonight. Eleven strikeouts. Fifth inning. Arado Park. There it was. The first pitch he saw after getting rung up by Bob Davidson. And I'm not going to wait around this time. I'm going to take a whack at that first thing I see, and he hit it in the seats. Pops up a bunt. Did him a favor that time. Not a bad idea, just not really something you see Gerardo Parra do much. Well, they're whacking the baseball. Whack. They're at Futures Field. Great spot here at the yard. I love that. Dang. Yeah, touch them all, son. It's like Paul Goldschmidt. Well, he drove in another run. He drove in another run yesterday. He now has nine home runs in 17 games and 20 RBIs. For the Mobile Bay Bears. Double A. One and one the count. We're going to tell you every night, folks, what he does. Because it's been fun to watch. It's, it's worthy of telling you. Back to the screen it goes. One and two the count. Lee was originally, when he began his career, a Montreal Expo. Fourth round pick in 2000. It was an interesting deal that sent him to Cleveland, where most of you probably got to know him. That's a strikeout. He is all Philadelphia Philly tonight, but he and his mates are trailing the home team Diamondbacks four to nothing.
Enjoying right next to Futures Field, the, the sand lot. Look at Ian Kennedy, like a kid playing in the sand lot. Got a brand new baby girl at home that will play in the sand lot too someday. What's made him so good tonight? Well, he's been ahead of the, just about every single Philly hitter, and then he's been able to work his fastball, his curveball, his changeup. Look at that beautiful freeze fastball, then the high hard one. And then, for good measure, just right by Raul Ibanez. Been a great game. Been a lot of fun to watch Ian Kennedy tonight. Slider stays high to Carlos Ruiz. Of the 37 starts Kennedy has made as a member of the Arizona Diamondbacks. As that one is belted to center field. Long's got room. And he puts it away. And we'll let Carlos Ruiz hit it in the air to center field all day. He's a good hitter, but doesn't quite have the juice to hit it out in the big part of the ballpark. So an easy out here to start the eighth. Pete Orr, former Atlanta Braves bench player for Bobby Cox, 7 of 21 coming off the bench. Oswalt tomorrow starting pitcher. Isn't that interesting? First pitch swinging. Got a fastball. Roberts is there, two outs. Boy, oh, you love that when that's your 100th pitch. But Kennedy. Ten of his 37 starts in Arizona have been starts in which he has gone seven or more innings and allowed three runs or less. That's what we call a quality start. A very quality start. You have to go seven. The team is six and three in those. Six and three. So they have taken advantage in the previous nine. Ross Glowed. Takes a pitch. As he pinch hits over the outside, three of 14 this season. I love that shot a moment ago. Lee and Oswald talking. You don't think that Oswald's going to school right now? Some of the tendencies. Look at Roy sat in that top step and watched that the whole game. Whole tonight. game. That's tomorrow starting pitcher by the way. All right. Chris Young. Gerardo Parr had a first pitch home run off him. Chris Young picked on a Daniel Hudson. He's got to start strong early. You're gonna you're gonna have to just flush April. Just flush it. I don't ever want to see April of 2011 again. Except tomorrow will still be April, but you know what I mean. Gas. Wow. That is nine strikeouts for the right hander, Ian Kennedy, shutting out the Philadelphia Phillies.
been some kind of special tonight. Four to nothing is the score right now. The Diamondbacks on top in the third inning. Kennedy got some support. Chris Young with a home run as we begin to summarize. Two to nothing. Gerardo Parra, fastball away. Three to nothing. Ian Kennedy got one more run of support along the way, an RBI X Nady, and he took the rest and he has sprinted to the house. The last time the Arizona Diamondbacks sent a pitcher to the mound that tossed a complete game shutout, that pitcher's name was Edwin Jackson, and he threw wow. a, a no hitter last year in Tampa. In this starting rotation, as Young hits a high fly ball deep left field, Michael Stutz. And the play is made. Young man making his big league debut. Ball find, you want it? Yes, it will. There you have it, Michael Stutz. Lake Oswego in Oregon. Santa Clara University. And Pete Orr is now at second base. Here's Kelly Johnson. By the way, there's some light catch going on out there, but Ian's never thrown a complete game. Well, he's going to get his chance here this evening, I think. J.J. Puts is just kind of, for the moment, eyewash getting loose out there. Is not a save opportunity with the four-run lead. I think Ian Kennedy's going to get every opportunity to save his own game. Two and one the count. Well, he's been a big help this year, hadn't he? J.J. Puts. Oh, my goodness. In more ways than just pitching. But you can offer up those words of advice and people will listen when you are pitching. Exactly. And pitching right. well. Exactly right. And knowing JJ as we know him to this point, he wouldn't be offering guidance if he wasn't getting people and out. And have had the career that he's had as well. Two and two. Stutz with a blazing fastball sits down Kelly Johnson. Hey, don't forget. Fox Sports presents exclusive coverage of UEFA Champions League semifinal action when Schalke takes on Man United on Fox Soccer. Then Wednesday, Barcelona takes on Real Madrid on FX. Coverage of both matches begins at 11 in HD. Love it. On the pitch. Here's Justin Upton. A little excited. Sorry about that. Well, here's the pitch. Well said. Is that what you're talking about? Stutes. Oh, no. Out on the pitch. Out on the field. Right. Soccer field. Soccer. The pitch. No, he just, this is it's what he's about to do here. 0 1 the count. Well, he is about to pitch. You're right in this hitter's ballpark. Well, I didn't say that. Right back to the screen it goes 0 2. Ian Kenny so far through eight, eight innings taking full advantage of this pitcher's ballpark. Throwing another shutout here at Chase Field. Seen a lot of them here over the years. Haven't actually seen one at all in here since. It's been a while. Oh nine. Lately, yes. Upton pops it up. Howard puts it away. Ian Kennedy and his wife Allison welcome their first daughter. And their first child, Nora, into the world at 2 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. Monday night, he's trying to throw the first ever complete game shutout of his career.
Southwest Airlines' new Rapid Rewards, unlimited rewards, seats, no blackout dates. Sonic, America's drive-in. It's new, it's better, it's Sonic good. Reliable, it's secure, and fast, heavy-duty internet from Quest. Ian Kennedy bidding for his first ever complete game and his first ever shutout in the major leagues. He's at 106 pitches facing Shane Victorino. And it's right back through the box. Knocks it over to Kelly Johnson. Kelly's there. One out. One, four, three, two outs from the finish line. Really nice play there on both ends. Just able to get a glove on it. That's sharp ground ball. And then nice play by Kelly Johnson. Doesn't get in too big of a hurry and makes the play. June 25th, 2010 in Tampa Bay, Edwin Jackson took the baseball, had to throw 149 pitches to go the distance. That was a complete game shutout. It was a no hitter. That's also the last Diamondbacks complete game period. Truly amazing. Popped up, beat him with a fastball. Justin Upton, over, under. The last complete game shutout by a Diamondback starter at home. Days before the All-Star game, 09. Dan Heron shut out Florida. And the crowd is starting to get on their feet and appreciate what they are seeing from one Ian Kennedy. A special night. One night after a special night, a great night for this man. A little number, it's a foul ball on a changeup. The new father of one about to deliver some kind of gift to little Nora. Curveball oh strike two. Breaking ball, it's blocked up. You have to go all the way back to 07 when he was pitching for Tampa in the Florida State League. That's the only complete game he's ever thrown as a pro. The one two pitch, it is low. His wife, brand new mom, a college basketball player. They met at USC. She understands the spirit of competition as well as anyone. Curveball, he did it. Happy Father's Day, Ian Kennedy. It's a complete game shutout for the first time as a big leaguer. Kennedy goes the distance. It is a shutout, four to nothing. ball for strike three and the best game of Ian Kennedy's young career has just been delivered here this evening what a way to finish it his tenth strikeout in his ninth inning and the fans really love what they saw tonight he's got a lot of proud teammates doing let's get it on out to the post game show they're ready my goodness, what a moment. It was our honor to be a part of a night like tonight. Ian Kennedy to the postgame now.